Yo, what's up people? So, today we're back with another guest on the channel who's kindly offered to share his story, his hair loss journey, and hopefully he's able to inspire some of you guys to take the action that you need to better yourselves. So, without further ado, allow me to welcome the guest for today, Yasin. Thank you for so much for coming on the channel, man. No, glad to be here, Ricky. Glad to be here. Not a problem. How are you? I'm good, man. Yeah, like as I was saying before, just uh, a lot as good of as you can be and... with in the world right now yeah, yeah. Um, but no it kind of I think the whole pause that's happening in the world right now did make me want to do something like this and just have a have a chat about it because these kind of videos and, and personal stories did help me a lot yeah um so yeah just want to just want to do my bit that's awesome and it's really appreciated as well I mean I'm sure a lot of people will be able to inspire off what you're willing to say today so um the first question I kind of had for you was when did you begin to notice that you might have been losing your hair and what was your initial reaction to it? Mm, I think my, my, the first time I noticed it was around 23. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm 26 now, 27 in a few months. And I think, yeah, when I was around 23, um, I noticed a, a bit of thinning around here, okay. around the kind of, I don't know what you call this area, but, uh, just just the general hairline area. Yeah, um, that would, that's thinning. the best way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of thinning hair. And I felt like my hair was always kind of a little bit thin at the very front of the hairline. So mm. I didn't know if it was a bit of denial initially, but I noticed a bit of thinning here. Um, and then I think maybe around 24, it got a little bit thin at the crown area as well. Mm -hmm. And because I had quite a lot of hair, you couldn't really see from the back. You couldn't see it. And the way I would comb it and the way I would kind of make it look and appear, hiding it, yeah. um, you definitely couldn't really see. But you could see that the front was getting thin. Mm -hmm. um, so my reaction when I kind of started to get out of that denial and acknowledge, yeah, this is really getting a bit thin, um, mm -hmm. it, felt like a, a, it felt like a punch in the stomach uh, <laughs> that first time that it was like, for real, yeah, this is definitely happening. This isn't yeah. just in my head. Um, yeah, and people had told me as well, which I, uh, you know, we can get to. Um, mm -hmm. And it came from two of my closest friends, actually. I see. And okay. I remember those days so vividly when it was delivered. And to them, it was just like a, a passing comment, like almost like a something you would say to a guy that you train with in the gym, like, oh, you're looking a little bit small today. Like, it yeah. was like that. It was that chilled. It wasn't but an attack. It wasn't an attack. No, it was honestly like, oh, you know, you, look like you got a bit smaller. Or, uh, <laughs> but it, what what my friend had said to me was, um, "Damn, man, you're losing your hair a little bit at the front." And again, it was that same punch in the stomach feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember it because all it was was I was walking down the steps on a bus, and my friend was behind me, um, and he must have just seen the top of my head and, and the front mm -hmm. bit, and that's when he said yeah man you're losing your hair a little bit um i think he might he might not even know that i'm talking about him right now but yeah that that was the first time it was said to me and yeah just and like, and like you said it, it was the fact that he probably even would even remember that comment that's how small it probably was to him but because you're kind of living with it and you're seeing it progress every day in the mirror it it is like a gut punch to the stomach um when you actually hear someone say it even if they don't necessarily want to attack you with it yeah exactly and at that point I was still by far in denial when I hadn't even really acknowledged what was happening yet so that mm -hmm. was the first time it was pointed out to me from someone else mm -hmm. um so yeah really hard man um mm -hmm. and the second time again was was again one of my really close friends walking um walking around Oxford Street just just chilling and there was there was three of us and again, it was like a, a little passing comment. Mm -hmm. And it was like, damn, man, you're losing your hair a little bit. Again, really similar <laughs> thing. And I, these people were like really close to me. And I know they wouldn't try and like... Go out their way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they wouldn't do that. But I think they hadn't acknowledged the level of insecurity and the level of pain that would cause someone that's going through that because they, they aren't going through it. Um, exactly. And it's just, it's just like they don't acknowledge all the insecurity that comes with it, that we're young men, you know, we're in our early 20s. This thing should have been happening to me, but it was. Exactly. It's that first sign of our mortality, isn't it? 
Yes, exactly. And yeah, it's, it's scary. Yeah. And obviously, we've discussed it um, off camera a little bit in regards to uh, hair transplants, but obviously, you kind of contemplated it. Could you go a bit more into that? So, what kind of procedures did you contemplate? Um, what methods did you contemplate in terms of a uh, hair transplant? Yeah, so I started out, and I'll, I'll get to that, but I started out by going to the GP because initially, mm-hmm. like, I looked at it as a problem that needs to be fixed and, like, a real, I need to get some advice on this. Yeah. So I went to the GP, and I'm like, what, 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 can, what can I do? Because I feel like I'm losing it. And I was so apprehensive of even saying that out loud, like, I'm losing mm-hmm. it a little bit. And this was about, I think, three years ago. Yeah. Um, and he, he had the coldest look on his face, and it was delivered with no empathy at all. It was just like... Or well, how much is it bothering you? Gosh. And again, being in that kind of denial state, I was like, oh, you know, like, not not much, but a little bit. And mm-hmm. he was just like, well, I'd recommend maybe a uh, finasteride. You know, that's the only thing I could really recommend. And I'd already done some research on that, and it scared the hell out of me, the side effects. But it seemed that it would work. Like, it seemed that it was working for some people, and it was kind of halting, um, stopping the hair loss or, or maybe growing some back. Mm-hmm. Um, but the side effects of like libido loss and depression oh. and stuff like that petrified the hell out of me. And it was a wake up call, like, you know, that this is, this is becoming a real issue because if you're having to turn to something like that to mm-hmm. fix this problem, then there's, there's really something you need to mm-hmm. look at. Yeah. Gambling, gambling one youthful trait going for another three or four youthful traits going like, like you said, libido and then ending up with mental health issues on top of already being insecure about the hair loss. I mean, it would be self-destructive at the end of the day, wouldn't it? If you had kind of gone for that, as, as you said, it's very scary to even have contemplated something like that. Mm, exactly. It's like, is it worth it? Is it worth the, the extra stress? And, but that was the first time I started really looking at procedures. So, you know, the, um, the Belgravia center, they do the hair transplants, don't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, they got all these adverts on the tubes and and I, because I just know of them, I, I sent them an email to be like, you know, I think, can I come in for a consultation? And they were like, yeah, you know, you've got to send us some pictures and then you, we can bring you in and yeah. um, and then assess it from there, the kind of treatment you need. And it sounded all like, all good and possible. Like it sounded, yeah, I could do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I looked at like the cost of maintaining their treatments of like, okay, it is medication, it is like ointments, mm-hmm. and it's things you need to take for the rest of your life if you want to, again, hold on to it. And again, it was right. another wake-up call, like, listen to yourself right now. Like, you're taking something that is going to change change the rest of your life. It's, it's mm-hmm. like like diabetic medication. You have to be on it to, to stop this problem. And again, it was like, this, is, this sounds too far. This doesn't sound right. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're in your 20s, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be dealing with something something like that. Mm. It's the last thing you want to really be dealing with when you're that young and that youthful and you've got so many years ahead of you. I mean, it does end up feeling like a death sentence. Exactly, yeah. And it, it, the, the transplant thing was... I never really took the transplant seriously. It was more the, the finasteride and the mm-hmm. Rogaine, things like that I really looked into, but I, mm-hmm. I never started. I think I actually even ordered some finasteride Mm-hmm. But it was just stood there because I ordered it and then I saw the side effects and mm-hmm. then I spoke to my GP and then it all just felt like, no, I don't want to take that. But I was very close to just starting it and thinking, yeah, yeah. maybe it'll make my hairline look a bit nicer. Maybe it'll be a bit more crisp. <laughs> maybe the insecurity will go away. Um, but it, it just, it's not the case. Um, and now you've got all these things like SMP, SMP as well, don't you? I've been told I, I need that before. <laughs> You did tell you. <laughs> yeah, I've had YouTube comments about it, man. I've had people saying, you know, you really need to get SMP. Obviously, I pay no mind because I'm comfortable with just rocking a bald head. But um, yeah, that's another big one. And I wouldn't say, I wouldn't ever stop anyone from going for it. I mean, if they are 100% at that stage where they just want to get a transplant, then I wouldn't ever try and downplay it. But at the same time, there's no conquering of your fears when you when you go for something like that because you're kind of taking that easy way out where you're covering up the problem you know you're putting a you, you you're sweeping it under the rug but the mental side to it you're still going to have to live with those effects that 
you didn't actually go out and embrace it for what it was. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's like, I don't want to come across like I'm poo-pooing anyone that did make that decision because if, mm-hmm. if it's made you happy, it's made you happy. And exactly. Yeah. Power to you. But for, for me, I just knew like, if I did that, then I'd be insecure about can people tell that I've got it done? And it's mm-hmm. opening up a whole new insecurity. Um, mm-hmm. And then it's like maintaining it. I think it's like a tattoo. You have to keep, keep it um, crisp, but maybe every year or two, you've got to go back and get it touched up. And again, it's like, is it, is it worth it? Is it worth the money investment? Is it worth the stress? Because it's still going to be on my mind. And it's still, exactly. it's still not the time management involved. The, truth. the time management as well. And it's just, but that, I never even looked at that because that I feel like is quite new. Um, mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough one. I can kind of tell when someone's got it done, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I don't at all want to say like pass any judgment on that. If, if you're happy, you're happy. And I think if you can be confident and, and just kind of be free with that, then amazing. But I know it wouldn't, it wouldn't make me feel the way that I, I wanted to feel. Um, exactly. So, yeah. There was a video I did about probably about two years ago now. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Fousey too, the, uh, the, the guy who used to do YouTube pranks back in the day. Yeah, so he obviously experienced hair loss. And I think at one point he actually did go for, you know, doing what we did, embracing it, shaving his head. But I think eventually he went into SMP and from the results that he showed, it seemed to have turned out all right. But this is where what I was saying in terms of sweeping the problem under the rug, even though he had solved the problem per se by obviously going for the SMP treatments, he still wasn't happy with it because he ended up basically not being content with it down the line. And what he did was he went to a unqualified person who said they can improve his SMP, improve the look of his hairline. And they ended up making it literally look like he had a tattoo on his head. So they ha- he had these weird dodgy lines on the side that you're not even meant to have. And Then he ended up having to have a tattoo removal done on his actual head, which I can only imagine was excruciating. So it goes to show, even though you have these procedures where you can kind of cover up the problem, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be mentally content because you haven't embraced the problem. You've put a hat over the thing. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, the, in terms of like finding content like this, and it was just, it was an eye opener that, okay, these people that have taken that step, um to to just shave their head and they seem like a different person there's something real in that like that isn't fake and it was so many different people from all around the world um like the states even just just people that are in their early 20s 19 18 that yeah. are going through something really you know that is 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 very difficult mm-hmm. and they've made a change and they've they've shaved it off and um they just seem like different people their energy seems different and it's there's something really real in that. So yeah, with, with the Fousey tube thing, again, I guess that was my ultimate fear. Like no matter what I do about this, that that core feeling, like sure I can have some outer confidence and think, oh, I'm looking a bit a bit sharp today and I'm, I'm looking good and the hairline's back and it, it looks strong. But yeah. Deep down, I will know I'm still insecure. I'm still troubled. I'm, it's not fixed. And that just didn't feel right to me. So yeah. So ultimately... What is it that gave you that push in the right direction towards shaving your head? What was that final? Was it just the feeling of knowing that this isn't going to solve the problem internally? Was that the push or was there something else that kind of pushed you towards it in the end? Yeah, the final push was definitely something I've heard in, in, I think, your videos as well um, and some other YouTuber videos. But just saying like that if it gets to the point where the anxiety is, is crippling you and, and the worries, the insecurities are crippling you, mm-hmm. no matter where you are in your hair loss journey, like I, I by no means was had like a massive ball patch at the top of my head or um, I still had quite a lot of hair left, but it, it, mm-hmm. the effect it was having on me was so strong that it just felt like I've got to do something about this. And I remember the, the day that actually that I decided to do it, um, it, for me it was a lot of stages so I was at work one day and I was taking pictures of my head as I think a lot of people would relate to but yeah. just taking pictures like this from different angles and then again it's just I realized this is something I do damn near every day 
and it's like this isn't right um and then I, I took it from an angle and it looked really bad it looked worse than i'd kind of acknowledged before yeah um, and i'd already been thinking about shaving it off for a good few months but i was just too scared mm -hmm. um, and i was watching other videos um of people that seemed so confident about it and i was just like that's not attainable like i, I can't feel that way because i feel so crap about it now that seeing them be so confident about taking that step it was like no it's too scary for me i'm not ready to mm -hmm. go there yet um but like that's taken that picture and then seeing it it made me on the way home i was on my way home from work and there's a barber shop right outside my um my block of flats yeah and i didn't i never went in there before i just always walked past it mm -hmm. and i didn't know what time they closed but i said to myself and this was weeks and weeks and weeks of thinking about it but I'd said to myself, if they're still open by the time I get off the bus to go home, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go in there and just have them shave it off to a number one or a zero point five or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I I got off the bus and I think they closed at seven and it was it was about half six, so I'd literally a few minutes left to kind of <laughs> get a trim and I looked in there and there was no one in there other than the barbers. It was just the barbers in there and mm -hmm. I could have gone in straight away. But I waited outside for about 15 minutes just contemplating, shit, should I do right this? Right until the end. <laughs> right until the end, yeah. Like, just, should I do this? And um, I, I went in and then as soon as I stepped in that shop, I just knew like, okay, it's happened now. It's, it's like it had already happened. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, they sat me down and, and, and shushed it all off with a clipper. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, I mean, I hated it initially. I really, it just felt like such a big change and my hair was such a big part of my identity. Like I had a lot, I had a, an Afro in my younger years. Like mm -hmm. it was such a big part of my identity. So to lose that and to see him shave it off and it just, it, it didn't give me that liberating feeling at first, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Cause you've got that unrecognizable person in front of you in the mirror all of a sudden, someone you've basically never seen before. You like you said it's it's so what we we kind of associate it so much with our identity that we have trouble dealing with it just because we don't know who we're looking at anymore and i felt that as well exactly ricky yeah like it, it's just it's changing identity and yes yeah, seeing it back in the mirror and you know what barbershops like they're so bright like you can it's just like you can see everything yeah and i just i just walked home walked into my mum's flat and just uh was like i did it <laughs> <laughs> And, um, and then I immediately took pictures and sent it to all my like friends. I sent it to some work people and I was just like, I did it, I did it. And waiting to get that reaction was, was nerve wracking. But mm -hmm. it, within a few days, it really did just start to make me feel like, do you know what? This is actually, there's so many good things that have come from this, just from a lifestyle perspective, like mm -hmm. um, not having to worry about getting up early to comb it. Um, exactly. I would spend hours after I've washed it to, to comb it out and make it look all neat. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's basically all gone. Um, and there's more on that story that I can get to in terms mm -hmm. of what kind of followed in the coming months, but I don't know if I should get to yeah. it now. I mean, you can feel free to really. But, um, in terms of my next question, I was just going to ask obviously, you said you sent photos, etc., to uh, your friends, family, work colleagues. Did you experience any negativity towards it, towards the decision um, once you had made it? Did you kind of get any negative responses, any people telling you to grow your hair back or anything like that? No, I got something from my dad and it wasn't okay. negative, but it was, it was very much like talking about, do you want some money for the transplant if, if that's what you want to do? Because I did mention it to him months ago and he was like, do you want some money to kind of do it and I, I took that the wrong way like what are you trying to say that this is the wrong thing to do um but to be honest man no no negative comments um mm -hmm. which was a massive shock it was almost like why haven't there been any negative comments yet like really surprised that there wasn't someone that was like oh why did you do that or because that's what yeah. was in my head why did you do that oh, it doesn't suit you it doesn't look good um Oh, you have loads of hair left, man. Why, why did you let it go? Or like, oh, even the things of you look so different. It's like, yeah, I do look different. <laughs> what, is it good, different, bad, different? And you don't know how to perceive it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, and I found myself really kind of wanting to hear the good, the good stuff. Like, yeah, man, it suits you, honestly. Um, and I mean, that, that is what I got. But I, I got to the point where I was thinking, 
even if I did get a bad comment, I, I think within the coming weeks and months, I knew that it wouldn't hurt. It would, because I think the most important thing is once you begin to become comfortable with it, yep. those comments really, they lose all their sting. Mm-hmm. Um, they really do lose all their sting. As soon as you're comfortable with it, no matter what anyone else says, I think it, it does just become like none. You can just flick it off. Exactly. Um, yeah, I didn't get any bad comments really, um, which is which that's was really nice. good. To, that's really good to hear, and I think that's a major fear for a lot of people, isn't it? They fear what people are going to react like, and we know for the most part, myself included, and yourself, we know for the most part, people aren't going to react in a negative way, and I think when we're in that place, when we're going through hair loss, we often forget that we live in a very self-centered world, and people have their own, you know stuff going on people have their own problems and insecurities that they're dealing with behind closed doors so it's never going to be a case where they're putting all their energy into trying to make us and belittle us or make us feel bad uh you'll of course get the odd person who's going to try and do that but half the time they're so insecure and so deep in their own insecurities themselves they're not worth taking they're not worth listening to in the first place exactly yeah Exactly. Um, we all have insecurities and some people just, I guess, aren't able, they're in denial just like I was, I think, with, mm-hmm. with the whole acknowledging that it's, or not acknowledging that it was happening, that I was losing it. Mm-hmm. We're all, we've all got insecurities and I definitely don't want to be like, I don't want to react in a way that's like, yeah, you've got an insecurity too because now I'm stooping to your level. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, do, we do all have things that we, we don't want to show the world that we're not ready to show. Um, yeah. So I guess... Yeah, like it's that's just how we are as people. Um, yeah. So, would you say, in terms of your perception of your confidence, your self confidence, would you say that you're you're now more confident than you were than back in the day when you had that head full of hair? Like you said, you had a you had a full on afro. Would you say your identity now as a bold man compared to back then as a young man with hair? Would you say you've got that same level of confidence now? I think I've got more. Um, I Brilliant. definitely I've got more. I think it's because of how it's changed my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, there's things that I was too anxious to do or nervous to do when I had hair that did stunt my confidence, like going swimming, for example. Mm-hmm. That's a nightmare. Yeah. If it's raining outside, as, as I'm sure you've had before, if it's raining outside, that's a nightmare. If mm-hmm. it's windy, that's a nightmare. Um, even things like I'm on a, ch- I'm on a tube and there's like a the windows open behind me and the wind is like blowing blows it in the wrong direction. (laughs) Yeah. Like (laughs) even things like that was just like, and again, I, my hair loss hadn't progressed to where like if the wind blew a big massive bowl patch would open, but it was thinning. So that still was a massive, massive worry, Mm -hmm. um, which dented the confidence. So yeah, when I did make the step to, to shave it off, um, to the number one, Mm -hmm. initially, that was like, it was all gone. I had, all of that was evaporated and um, once I began to become comfortable with the look itself and how I felt about it, that's when I think I just, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm the most confident person in the world. Like we, you know, I've, I've still got insecurities, um, but it definitely did in, in the hair loss regard. It just made me feel so free, um, liberated. I know that's kind of the words everyone uses, but yeah, it just yeah. felt really free, just free, just like pure freedom, man. That was, that was it never having to worry about where you sit on the train, never having to worry about, you know, when it's going to rain on a particular day. I mean, I definitely had that issue with rain a few times in my life, even down to my early 20s when I wasn't even balding. I remember being quite thin at the front and I remember one day, I think I was on my way to a date and once I actually got to the location where I was going, I remember the girl actually commenting to me, wow, I can see your scalp because it had been raining and I had no umbrella and I just remember how that made me feel and it just was a case that I never ever would have contemplated I'm going to shave my head at that point and I think the thing that really drove me over the edge was hearing it from friends where they would kind of the same way you you commented earlier where they would say oh you know you're starting to thin a bit at the front and it would drive me insane but at the same time I think that was the seed needed to kind of drive me in the right direction as well exactly yeah and again i don't think it, i don't think people realize how how hurtful it is and if they knew how much it did hurt you it mm-hmm. probably wouldn't say it but um 
yeah, it definitely is the seed that kind of wakes you up a little bit. And, and when you realise there's really only one thing you can do about it to, to liberate yourself from that, that anxiety and that, that insecurity, um, mm-hmm. it kind of just opens the door a little bit because there's nothing you can do about it. It's not like um, you've, you've added some Christmas weight and you want to lose some weight. So you go back exactly. to the gym. It's, 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 you can't do that. Um, so yeah, I, I hear you on that, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> this one is a little bit more deep. So, you know, if you don't want to kind of go into it, that's completely fine. You know, we can kind of skim over it. But I wanted to ask, has your new look had any significant impact for better or worse on your personal life, your career, dating? In that regard, has it had any, has it had any positive or ne- negative impact as far as you can see? That's a good question. I mean, I'll start with dating. I've got a girlfriend um, mm-hmm. who's a rock star. Like she, when <laughs> I met her three and a half years ago, I had that afro. Well, I say afro, but it it just kind of grew like this, and it was quite curly. So I yeah. had a lot of hair and had a pretty nice head of hair. And then <laughs> she met me like that. And then after maybe six months of us dating, that's when it started to happen. It started to realise, yeah, the hair's going. Um, okay. And then when I did buzz it off, her reaction was was like a big thing for me, like how, how is she gonna feel? Um, mm-hmm. And it was, her reaction was so chill. And it was literally like, I've got the train to see her. Um, and then I got off the train and she was like, oh, it's not that different. I was thinking, <laughs> it flipping is like, I had this much hair now I've got, not, I've got like this much hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So it, 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 she really just sort of downplayed it. I don't think she really realized how massive of a deal it was for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but her reaction did kind of feel good. It was like, you don't even see me differently. Um, you that get that relief. That relief, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think career-wise, it, it hasn't... I, don't, I, don't, I haven't really thought of that in terms of my career. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, man, I think the lifestyle was, is the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Um, my day-to-day lifestyle but I can see if I was dating like if I was single hypothetically mm-hmm. um, I think it would liberate me quite a bit again because it's like like you said man when you were on that date and she pointed it out it's horrible and now you've almost got some PTSD that when you're on future dates are they going to point it out again you yeah. know like it's, it's there but once you've taken that step and you've come comfortable with it mm-hmm nothing nothing can be said and it just it's like a shield man it really is like a shield that just Mm -hmm. protects you you know there's nothing you can say about my look that's gonna that's gonna dent me um yeah exactly yeah i'm sorry i can't give too much more on that ricky but yeah it just career i haven't really thought about my career like in terms of that no i mean in terms of obviously your relationship with your um, girlfriend i mean the fact that you were with her before and after and the fact she didn't even react in a major way, like a lot of guys, because, you know, a lot of guys will be out there and they'll have girlfriends, wives, etc. And I think the first thing we'll, they will think is, the next time I see my girlfriend, what is she going to react like? Is it going to be over? Is she going to, you know, go bonkers and tell me that I need to grow it back? And that's the worst kind of uh, feeling that you get. You get that anxiety that it's going to be, it's going to be be all end all for my relationships and, any chance of me having a romantic relationship from here. I think that's one of the major things and a guy's fear. And I think that's down to even the way the stigma is portrayed in the media with hair loss for young guys. I think yeah. the media have a big impact on that when it comes to young guys' perceptions on balding. Yes, 1 million percent. And like that, that's a whole nother can of worms. But like, you know, like, like we were kind of in our chat before about the ways to reverse it. And now you've got all these things like hair fibers that Mm -hmm. I'm seeing adverts for like nonstop, even for women, they've got these, like these sprays now that you can use to cover your scalp or like areas that are a bit more thin. And it honestly breaks my heart, man, because it's, it's, it's just so it's really preying on someone's deep insecurity and Mm -hmm it's horrible like it, i don't think we realize how horrible it is and it's people almost think treat it to an extent like makeup like yeah i'm just kind of enhancing my look making myself look a little bit nicer but it's like mm-hmm. it's it's a dark world man because they really do kind of prey on on that on that shame and that like yeah this is a problem you need to fix i agree um, and it's horrible man it, it really is i remember um this was December 2015 this was so 
I initially shaved my head for the very first time September 2015, but I was similar to yourself. I hated it at first. I could not deal with it. And in fact, I ended up growing it back pretty much instantly because you can say that was partly down to the crowd I was around at the time as well, who weren't really supportive towards the decision, unfortunately. But um, what I ended up doing was trying to grow it back, thinking, oh, maybe it'll grow back better this time. And I remember being in New York on a family vacation in tw uh, December 2015. And I started using, as we discussed earlier, hair fibers to kind of cover up where I was balding. And I don't know how familiar you are with hair fibers, but generally you have to have some hair for the hair fiber to kind of cling on to. I was applying it to the parts where I had no hair at all. So you can imagine how ridiculous it looked. And on top of that, I was using hairspray, cheap supermarket hairspray to kind of seal it in and then make this false kind of hairline that I could then go out with and feel confident about. But I remember I was kind of going around New York with my family. I must have glanced in a mirror at a restaurant we were in and I noticed that it was kind of smudging. And I kid you not, never have I been New York before, but I made the travel from the restaurant that we were at all the way back to the hotel that we were staying in just so I could wash out the fibers and refix it because I felt so anxious about how I looked. And that goes to show just how much they do prey on people's fears and anxieties. And I think it only enhances it at the end of the day because if it can do something like that to me when, you know, when I'm meant to be out there enjoying a holiday with my family at Christmas time, it's it goes to show, it goes to show just how dangerous it can be. You're right in that sense. And again, I don't want to make it like a, a bashing thing against people that do turn to that stuff, but it's it's more like, I think it really can build your your outer confidence and it can make you think, oh, I'm looking good today. Mm -hmm. But it's, I think it's scary that, okay, if I take that away from you, if I said you can't use any hair fibers for, for a couple of months, or you can't use your Rogaine or Finasteride or anything like that for a few months, how will that feel? And I know for me, I knew like it would it would bring my anxiety to a whole new level because now I've become attached to this thing mm -hmm. and I've almost built a relationship with it, like an ongoing relationship yeah. with these products. And if you take it away from me, it's going to send me to a place that I might not even want to leave the house. So every time I do leave the house, I'm thinking, does it look worse? Am I going to get a comment that makes me feel worse? Um, and again, it goes back to that whole lifestyle thing, man. It's just such a... A lifestyle change when you do um, just just get rid of it and, and get to love your new look. Um, but I completely understand the people that, that are apprehensive because I was the same about like it won't suit me. Mm -hmm. um, I was the same way, you know. I thought like, no, nah, you don't have the look for it. You don't, you can't grow a beard. You don't have the right head shape for it. Mm -hmm. You've got to have like a perfect head shape for it. These were again things that I've. I've heard before every every ball every guy who's going through it kind of goes through those thoughts don't they I think a major one for me was the fact that I think even in like as we've been talking about with the media and how they portray hair loss for young guys I think they make it as if I think they portray it in a way that we end up feeling like we're gonna look 80 years old at 20 if we decide to go ahead and you know shave our heads and it's the complete opposite because you know, I've seen I've seen your photos, for example, pre and post bold. And I mean, personally, I think you look younger now. And even myself, I look at my photos compared to when I was about 24. I feel younger now. I feel like I feel like I'm more glowing. I feel like you kind of get that glow once you've done it. And then you realize that, you know, all these companies who promote, you know, these hair fibers and procedures, they really do portray it as if you're going to look 85 years old by the time you're 25 years old. And it's just not the case. And I can understand why it promotes fear in a lot of guys. Yeah, it's, it's just sad, but, um, and it really is hard to put into words. I think how it does feel when you do become comfortable with it. Um, mm -hmm. and I think for me, I, I really never thought I'd get to a stage where I did feel comfortable with it. I thought, even if I make this change, it's going to be so different. and it's, I'm not going to like it and I'm going to have to live with it. On the bright side, yeah, sure, I'll have a kind of better lifestyle, I'll have more free time and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I really just thought, that's, I'm just going to have to live with that because I'm not going to like it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think 
people will be shocked like that once that initial shock period is over where you're like because not everyone i guess felt like you said you didn't like it straight away and, and either did i not everyone gets to shave it off and think actually do you know what? i, I kind of like this not everyone has that luxury um mm -hmm. but it does come like in time um it does come and it's it's just such a good feeling man isn't it like just exactly yeah it took me about probably a year even even after i had so i had that period during christmas 2015 where i tried to grow it back and then i finally made the decision to stick with it in february 2016 and i've been shaving my head ever since but it, even from that point onwards it took me about a year to really get comfortable with it i was always wearing caps and hats when i went out the house and i'd shave my head at home and i'd feel good about it in the mirror when i'm at home but I'd still have to have that safety blanket when I step out of the house. And it was only when my fiance, when I started dating her and she kind of told me, I think I must have gone to where she was staying at the time back when our relationship was just starting. And I was wearing a cap in the house and it was very small and subtle. But I remember her telling me, you know, you know, you don't need to wear that cap in the house or at all, really. And I kind of just it kind of stuck with me that did. And I thought you know what you're right I really don't need to wear it there's nothing wrong with me being proud of how I look and that had a major impact on myself that's nice but that that, that warms my heart to hear that because it's just it's one of those comments that just makes you smile and it's like it, it really does kind of free you where mm -hmm. you're just like oh like I can I can be myself now um yeah man yeah it's similar to how obviously your girlfriend gave you that gave you that uh, feeling of relief when you went over there and it was like, oh, it's not that different. Uh, yeah, and it was a process for me because like I initially just started going to the barbers and I'd go once a week to the <laughs> barbers because after a week, a week's um, like, amount of growth, I just, it started to look a little bit thin <laughs> and you could see that it was, yeah, growing a bit thick here but still was a bit thin here and, it, and then in the back and it, Again, it was like, oh crap, I'm getting that feeling again. Like, yeah. And I thought, I'm kind of having to rely a little bit on the barbers. Like, what if the barbers were shot? Like now, for example. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, what's, what's that going to do? Um, and it was also a lot of money as well. So I, I bought my own pair of clippers and, and just started doing it myself. And mm -hmm. sure, it wasn't as sharp of a, of a trim as, as the barbers could be, but it mm -hmm. kind of put me in control. And it was... I thought I got I got decent with a, with a good few months. Don't get me wrong; it was it was pretty bad at first, but yeah. Um, yeah, like I think it gave me a bit of control to where I was like, whenever I want to cut my hair, I can do it. Um, and I think it was that first step of okay, now I've I've shaved it or I've had someone shave it off, and I've taken that step. And then the next step was okay, now can I do it myself? Like, can yeah. I rely on myself to be the one that that keeps it trim and keeps it clean, etc. Um, and then that was, that was the next stage for me. And I did that for a good few months. I think, um, maybe for about seven or eight months, that was my process of, but it was time consuming because I, I would do it every kind of four days. Um, which is kind of, it's quite a lot when I say it out loud to be, I think, giving yourself not, not a bald cut, like not, not a shaved head, but just a, a haircut to like a number one. Yeah. So um, you're still keeping a little bit yeah yeah exactly keeping a little bit of it and it was it was just a lot of time and it was like again there's something that doesn't feel i've made a big change here but something still doesn't feel fully right mm -hmm. and it was like it was still felt great because i still made a massive step and i don't want to downplay the step that was made because it is a, a big step for a lot of people to mm -hmm. go from like a, a head full of hair to like a, a number a one cut. yeah a buzz a buzz cut exactly yeah mm -hmm. but for me it still it still didn't feel like fully liberating it still it was it was it felt good but it didn't give me that full feeling mm -hmm. um and then i think talking now about three months ago i bought a foil shaver okay if you use the foil shaver, i know you use like similar ones you use like the um the remington uh the it's like a the, cir the circular one the circular one yeah yeah you've used those before i think yeah. it's similar to those but it's um it can get it really kind of smooth not as smooth as like a blade but quite smooth and i used that for the first time and and, and that kind of felt like 
another big step when it was like, okay, now I've, I've, I've shaved it to the skin. Now yeah. it's like, there's, there's, I've, this is, this is as low as it can get. There's nothing you can do here. Um, and that's when I, I think I got that full 100% like liberation that this takes me 10, 15, 20 minutes to do. Mm. And it just feels like I actually quite like it. And I, because I kind of eased into it, I didn't go from a head full of hair to a, a completely like skin, baby smooth head. Yeah. I eased into it. And I think that was my process. I think for a lot of people, everyone's process is different. Exactly. I don't think one's like better than the other. I really don't. Everyone's going to be, everyone's going to have a kind of different journey in that regard. I mean, myself, I went full on cold turkey, I had a head full of hair one day, completely bald the next. But as you said, some people are going to have to transition a little bit slower and there's nothing wrong with that. Some people are going to be more comfortable maybe just having a number one at the barbers for the first couple months. Then maybe they pick up a blade or maybe they do it themselves at home. And every process is all right because at the end of the day, it's progression uh, towards ultimately beating this anxiety that comes with hair loss. Exactly, yeah. And as you said, man, not, not, that it's not a race. Like one isn't better than the other. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, and I think the hard one is for people that do still have quite a lot of hair left, mm-hmm. which I've seen videos about before, where it's like you're not balding to a point where it, it does look like it's very, very noticeable. It might just mm-hmm. be quite quite um mm-hmm. that's i think they're the positions that i was kind of in where it doesn't look that bad yeah it, I, I notice it and i think they're the ones that yeah maybe you do want to go for like a buzz cut first because you know it might actually you might like it quite a lot um yeah you don't i guess you don't have to go to the skin straight away but if you do go to it straight away again nothing wrong with that either like it's, it's your process and there's a lot of trial and error in this like exactly it's a bit of an expectation that you've got to kind of feel liberated straight away and feel like you love it straight away but um for some people yeah like you said it does take a few weeks maybe mm-hmm. to kind of get that so you were saying obviously you used to do it every four days and now you kind of go through the process of using the blade etc um do you ever have those days where you do kind of let it grow for a few days and kind of let that stubble go out. Do you ever kind of step out the house? Obviously not now at this period, but prior to quarantine, did you ever used to kind of let it grow out? Say if you were too busy to shave it and would you feel comfortable enough to go out? That's a great question. I think like I, whenever I grow out for more than like three days, four days ish. Yeah. This hair grows back quick. I think you said a video, you had a video where you were like, it's, it's annoying. The hair that you don't want to grow back, grows back really quick. Very quick. It's really true. So yeah, I think for me after maybe like four days of growth, I do feel a little bit like I feel a bit messy. I think it's not so much about the hair loss pattern as it used to be like i'm not really thinking as much all oh, my hairlines receded or you can see the thinning hair a little bit it's mm-hmm. more like i feel quite messy i feel a little bit unkept um but i think if i grew out for a week or like a week and a half two weeks and it grew out quite a lot mm-hmm. definitely would start to feel a little bit insecure again i feel a little bit like i'm not liking this mm-hmm. um and i'd yeah, I'd be kind of wary of what people would think a little bit yeah. more again. Um, but, I, you know, it'd be great to get to a place at some point where, and I kind of said this to my girlfriend, I was just like, I would love to get to a point where I just did not care about my image at all. At all. Not, in, yeah. not in the sense that, like, I make myself just look like hell and I just go outside wearing, like, raggedy pyjamas all the time. But just, <laughs> just where I don't put pressure on myself to to be looking good or to be looking like crisp and fresh all the time. Like Mm -hmm. if I could go out after two weeks of growth and have some balding patterns showing and just still feel like my normal self, just Mm -hmm. like that would be complete bliss. And I think that is attainable, you know, with time. I don't know how you feel about that. I would agree with that just because I've, I've done it myself in the sense that to be fair, in terms of my head shaving routine, I only tend to shave my head about once a week nowadays because Obviously not at the moment, but when it's a normal working week, I won't really I won't really care how I look when I'm in the workplace. Obviously I'll be presentable, but as far as keeping my head baby smooth every day, it's not a big deal to me anymore because I've kind of given myself that training where I have stepped out the house. I've told myself, 
come on, you're only going down the road to see so-and-so or go to work or pick up the groceries. You don't need to shave your head just for those reasons. You're not going to a special occasion. Just step out the house with it how it is and save some time. And I think doing those little bits of training exercises, you can call them, I think they really helped me in terms of just going out the house and not caring about how I look. And obviously, you're never going to feel fresh and trim when you do that. Obviously, it's always great when at the end of the week, I pick up the blade and I shave my head for the weekend and I feel amazing then. But at the same time, that training and just going out there every now and then with it grown out a little bit really does help you, especially if it's for small things like going to work or going to the supermarket. I totally agree. I think that's the next step for me. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe like to the newbies, um, but definitely yeah. for me, like, I'm not there yet, but I think, it, like you said, it is attainable. I think with time, mm -hmm. it's letting go of that that expectation that you have to be looking fresh, or um, mm -hmm. even yeah, like even to pop to the shops. Like if I grew out for a week, even pop into like Tesco down the road would feel a bit like, oh, uh, it's not looking good. Yeah. It's like, got to shave my head first. So ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible, but I think it, it compared to where it was before in terms of when I had a lot of hair, the insecurity is just, it's in a, a whole different place and it's, it's not even close to where it was. So I, I just, I think I want to acknowledge that, yeah, when you do have a shaved head, it isn't all perfect. Like, yeah, you do have to maybe, if you fancy it, shaving it every week, you know, like you can't go maybe two, three months with it and just let it grow if you want to keep a shaved head. Because some people just get a haircut every few months. Yeah. Um, so a bit, a bit of maintenance, but in terms of, overcoming that, that insecurity like it I, I and i keep repeating myself but it's just it's a whole new world like when you when you get to that point um absolutely yeah and it's like finding your routine as well because we all have different shaving routines and when you get to what you're comfortable with again mm -hmm. it's a part of that this works for me and it just feels good right exactly everyone has their own kind of method like i said i, I do mine once a week other people will do theirs every day and it's about finding what you're comfortable with at the end of the day. Yeah. And again, not one, one isn't better than the other. Like, I think that's, that's the main thing I want to kind of shake is that like, it's not a competition. It's not a race. We don't have, I don't have to be um, conforming to these standards that other people maybe live by. Like if you want to shave it every day, just mm -hmm. to make sure there isn't one single bit of stubble on your head, no problem with that. Like that is, that works for you and all power to you. Yes. But, um, I don't want to feel like I have to keep up with that almost. I just want to let go completely. Not completely, yeah. but you, you know what I mean. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. um, well, we're wrapping it up more or less now. So last question really was, do you have anything you want to ask me before we wrap up? Or do you even have any advice that you kind of want to offer other than what you've already offered in the video? Do you have anything kind of final you want to add in regards to advice from your own experiences up to this point? Um, I think the main thing is that everyone's, I know it's a bit cliche, so forgive me, but everyone's journey is different. And um, I, th I think it's okay to be in a bit of denial at first. Um, mm -hmm. like, like you said, man, it's, it's a part of your process. Um, it's okay to, if it really, really, really dents your confidence, if someone says something to you about that, that's, that's okay. And it does hurt, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's okay. I don't think we should be putting ourselves down for, for feeling so crap after a comment like that. Um, exactly. So yeah, I think that's, that's the main thing, man. Just, um, and I think now is an interesting time with the whole, you know, lockdown situation to maybe take advantage experiment because yeah, it's, it's not, it's, you don't have to be like sending pictures to everyone. You can just be curious and see how does it look? So it's, it's an interesting time now. Um, but I think, yeah, just the last comment is, is like I kind of said before, man, just, just thanking you, um, and thanking the whole community that you've kind of helped build mm -hmm. I think because I do find like I'm not big on like scrolling through comments because there's a lot of like trolls out there in this world but yeah. whenever I scroll through comments like with with videos like yourself it's like 99.9% .9 positive and uplifting it's like people supporting each other through this pro no matter what stage you're at it's, mm -hmm. it's supporting each other I think that's really rare in this day and age um, it's a class for us rare. yeah yeah, so I'll just thank you, man, for, for doing what you're doing. Appreciate that, man. And 
like I said, it's really an honor to have you just come on the channel as well and share your story. I appreciated the fact that, you know, you took the time to email me telling you, telling me what you had gone through. And I can definitely say that I related to a lot of it as well. And, you know, it means the world that you've actually took the time out to come on the channel. And I'm sure guys who are going to watch this, even girls who are going to watch this will be able to kind of take something away from your story and, you know, apply it in a positive way towards their life at the moment. So we can only thank you in that regard as well from the whole community. No, f thank you, Ricky. Yeah. Thank you, man. No problem at all.